Hey there, want to learn how to create smooth 3D transitions for your edits, just like this one? Oh, hello. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of arranging your clips, applying Twixter, and creating smooth 3D zooms that will elevate your transitions. Let's get started. First, go ahead and create a new composition with your footage. Then, adjust the composition settings to match your desired resolution. Personally, I use 1080 by 1080 but there's other resolutions you can use depending on what platform you're posting to and how you want it to look. Also, make sure to adjust the length of the composition to around whatever length you want your video to be. After setting up your composition, find and lay out your clips. Because we are using mask to transition to the next clip, you must drag the clips below each other within the timeline so now they are oriented like so. Now we can apply Twixter. This part is crucial for timing the clips so there isn't any change in scenes while the 3D transitions are happening. Pre-compose each layer. In the Effects and Presets tab, search for Twixter. Drag this onto your clips. Once Twixter is applied, start on the first clip and set a keyframe about where you want your zoom transition to start. Then press U to bring up the keyframes. Go 10 frames over or press page down on your keyboard and add another keyframe with a value of 30. Now take your second clip and move it between 10 to 20 frames back. We do this because while zooming into our first clip, our mask will be appearing with our second clip during the transition. Add a keyframe where your second clip is on screen and set this value to a speed fit right for you. In my case, a value of 10 will work. I will repeat this process with my next clip, but I will also add a keyframe at the end of the clip so that the speed gradually increases. Do note that setting up the Twixter will require a bit of adjusting and your values might differ from mine based off of the speed and length of your original clips. After setting up the Twixter, pre-compose each layer once more. Now it's time to set up the 3D camera. First, toggle on the 3D layers for all the clips as well as motion blur. Then import a 3D camera. To do so, right click, click new, then camera. For these settings, make it a one node camera if it isn't already, then click the custom drop down box and change it to 50 millimeter. Once the camera is imported, make sure it is on top of your layers. To control our camera movements, we will be using null objects. This gives us more flexibility and allows for smoother transitions. So right click and add a null object above the camera. Then toggle on the 3D and motion blur for the null and parent the 3D camera to it. To do so, you can either use the pick whip and drag it to the null object layer, or you can click the drop down and select null object. Once that is set up, we can now create our mask. For the first transition, I will be zooming into Deadpool's eye so to start, select your first clip and go up to the top toolbar. Select the pen tool and make sure to check the Roto Bezier box. Then drag the current time indicator to the beginning of your second clip and create your mask. When you finish the mask, go to the mask in the layer effects. Right click on the mask and then click track mask and the tracker panel will open on the right side. Click play for the mask track automatically or if it messes up, you can click the button on the right to go frame by frame and make necessary adjustments as you go. When the mask is tracked, select the mask in the layer effects again and then click Ctrl Shift N on your keyboard. This will create another mask. Then set the top mask to subtract and the bottom mask to intersect. Also, to make the mask blend better, open the settings for the top mask and set the feather to 10. Now that we have our mask, our second layer will appear inside of it. We now have a starting point for creating our 3D zooms. This is just a basic layout to get an idea of what we want our transitions to become. So moving forward, there will be a lot of little adjustments I will make and different effects I will use that are necessary to complete the transitions. First, open the positioning of your second clip and set the Z position to 1200, then roughly center inside the mask. Now, open the positioning for the null object and set a keyframe at the start of your second clip. Then go to the end and increase the Z position. You can now see the 3D in effect. 
Continue increasing the Z position and adjusting the X and Y until you complete the zoom through your mask. Now go back and adjust the positioning of your second clip so that once the zoom is completed, your clip is centered. If your clip is zoomed in too far, simply change the scale of the pre-comp and then readjust to make it centered again. Next, we will adjust the keyframes to make for a smoother zoom. For me, this zoom is happening a little too fast, so I will drag the starting keyframe back a ways. Then highlight both keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. Open up the graph to the speed graph and select the starting keyframe and drag this to the right. Then select your ending keyframe and drag this over to the right as well. This will make the zoom have a gradual start and speed up towards the end. Either copy my graph or adjust it yourself until you get something you're happy with. Once you have the zoom, we need to opacity the mask. So open the mask on your first clip, set the bottom mask to add. Then go to the opacity and set a keyframe at the beginning of your second clip. Go over a couple frames and set this value to zero. Now the mask fades up nicely during the zoom. However, the mask is fading up a bit fast and I would like to smoothen that out by starting the opacity animation sooner. To do so, drag your second clip further to the left on the timeline. Bring the time indicator to the start of the layer, then go back to the mask on your first clip. Simply reposition your mask, then use the tracker panel to track the remaining frames. Once that is completed, take the opacity keyframe and move it back to the beginning of the second clip. That adjustment definitely makes for a smoother feeling transition. Also, your clip may be too small to fit the entire screen while the transition is happening. To fix this, go to the Effects and Presets tab and search Motion Tile. Drag this onto your second clip. Then set the output width and height to 200 and check Mirror Edges. This reflects the image and eliminates that black space. Now, let's move on to the second transition. This process will be similar to the first zoom with a few adjustments to ensure everything flows seamlessly. Open the position properties of your third clip, then set the Z position to 2400. We're adjusting the Z position because the second clip is set to 1200. And after zooming the camera in with the null object, it has brought the clip closer to the camera's focal point. So since we zoomed into the second clip in 3D space, the third clip needs to be positioned farther away to maintain the depth and smooth flow of the transition. By setting the third clip Z position to 2400, we place it farther from the camera, and by going in increments of 1200, it keeps everything consistent from transition to transition. Now take your third clip and move this over on the timeline to where you want your mask to start fading up. For example, I will be zooming into Deadpool's eye again, and because this is going to be a constant zoom, you want your mask of your third clip fading up as soon as your second clip is on screen. Then create your mask. Bring the time indicator to where your first clip ends and your second clip is fully on screen. Select your second clip, select the pen tool, and make sure it's Roto Bezier. Then make your mask. Open the mask in the layer, right click, and track mask. I will also track the mask back a few frames to be at the beginning of my third clip. Then select the mask and press Ctrl Shift N. Set the top mask to subtract and the bottom mask to intersect. Open the properties of the top mask and make the feather 10. Next, create a new null object. Right click, click New, Null Object. Then turn on the 3D and Motion Blur and parent the first null to the new null. This will be used for the next transition. Open the positioning and set a keyframe roughly in the middle of the two positioning keyframes for the first null. Then go over a decent amount of frames and zoom into your mask. Scale and reposition to center your clip. Then add the same motion tile from your second clip to mirror the edges. Next, highlight both keyframes and apply Easy Ease. Open the speed graph and adjust it to create a slight gradual increase in speed at the beginning, followed by a gradual decrease at the end. There's no exact method for this. It's a matter of experimenting with your keyframes and graph to find what looks best to you as you build the transition. 
The goal is to create the smoothest transition between the first zoom and the second zoom, ensuring a consistent flow. Once you're satisfied with your keyframes and graph, you may notice that the zoom is no longer aligned with the mask as it was when you first set it up. This happens because the second null object is moving the positioning before the first null object has completed its zoom. To fix this, simply readjust the positioning of the keyframes. After adjusting the first zoom's position, the same approach will apply to the second zoom. We are now nearing the end of the tutorial. All that's left is to make any final adjustments you feel are necessary to perfect your new favorite transition. And that's it. You've now learned how to create a seamless 3D zoom transition with Easy Ease, Mask, and Twixter. With these techniques, you can add a unique and professional touch to your edits, making them stand out. Remember, the key to mastering transitions is practice and experimentation. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Drop any questions or feedback in the comments below, I'd love to help out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.